Welcome everyone to our Build Your AutoCAD IQ webcast for March 10th. This track is the third dimension, Solid Editing Tips and Tricks in AutoCAD 2016 is what we'll focus on today. And our presenter will be Victoria Studley. And I'll, I'll be moderating Mar Martin Stewart, assisted by Noman Mysorwala, our expert elite. So here's a little bit of a profile for each of us on the next screen. Victoria is based out of Manchester, New Hampshire, and she's with our technical support staff, as well as uh, myself, Martin Stewart. I'm based out of Oregon. And then Noman is in Cincinnati, Ohio, and assisting us today with uh, answering your questions online. So our Autodesk Help webinar series, Build Your AutoCAD IQ, uh, is hosted by Autodesk Technical Support, and we today do have uh, two of us to assist Victoria in the background with your questions. So you can add your questions uh, during the webinar in the chat window. Uh, some of your questions will probably be covered during the presentation. Uh, we will be recording this webinar, so that recording will be available to you later as well. The data set and this slide deck is also available, and those links are in your reminder email and in the chat window, so you'll be able to download those also. Upcoming webinars include uh, what you see listed there for the next four weeks are Beyond the Basics, then Tips and Tricks, in AutoCAD 2017. We're looking forward to that release and we'll start out with new features in AutoCAD 2017 and then move into uh, future webinars using AutoCAD 2017. All our webinars are available uh, in at YouTube and that link is listed there in our slides and also in the chat and in your reminder email for today's uh, webinar. So you probably are getting accustomed to getting a weekly webinar reminder. Uh, you might want to hang on to that instead of delete it right away because it does have a lot of these easy access links for you in that reminder email. And then if you want to go uh, deeper, you can join our community forums listed there. You can even help us with uh, testing future software through the customer council. And then our Build Your AutoCAD IQ webinar landing page is there if you want to encourage some colleagues to register as well. This week's agenda is going to be, as we said, focusing on solid editing tips and tricks. And here's the topics that we'll be going over. But before we turn it over to Victoria, we'd like to do a few uh, quick polls and I'll launch the first poll. Is this your first help webinar? I'll go ahead and close that one and we'll share the results with you. And so about 11%, this is your first time when we welcome you to our webinar series and then we appreciate the nearly 90 percent returning that's great let's go ahead and go to the next poll which AutoCAD uh, application do you use is our next poll that'll be coming up here in a moment give you a few moments for that answers are still coming in We'll close that poll now and go ahead and share the results. It's so almost 50% uh, in full AutoCAD, another 20% in AutoCAD LT, and then the remainder in our uh, verticals. Thank you for that. And then one more poll and we'll be off and running. This one's specific to our webinar today. 
do you use 3D modeling and editing tools in AutoCAD already? Give that a few more moments. Go ahead and close that poll now. And we'll share that. And a pretty even split, um, some quite a bit, nearly 40% occasionally, and uh, almost 40% this is your first time, so there'll be a lot of new information for you. I'm going to go ahead and close that poll. And Victoria, we'll let you take the reins. Thanks for the great introduction, Martin. I'm just going to steal the screen from you here. And uh, here we go. And just let me know when you can see my screen. Can you see me yet? I'm still checking. We can see you, Victoria. Yes. Okay. All right. Good. Excellent. All right. So welcome, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Uh, for those who joined a little late or didn't uh, hear it to begin with, we are um, presenting another series in our uh, third dimension uh, webinar series today. So we'll be dealing with 3D tools. They're only available in the full version of AutoCAD. So if you're an AutoCAD LT customer, uh, there won't be uh, 3D tools for you in the program, but this might be a nice introduction uh, to these tools in case you um, receive files from clients who do work in 3D. Now, you can open them in LT, uh, but the functionality is a little bit limited. Um, still a, a good overview, so stick with us if you're if you're curious. Um, let's see. So we'll be talking about editing tools, and here's the uh, data set that I prepared for you today just to demonstrate. Um, simply how these uh, editing functions work. Um, we've covered in a previous webinar um, how to create 3D objects like uh, solids, meshes, surfaces. Um, so there is a, an overview of that in one of our previous Build Your AutoCAD IQ webinars, which is on that YouTube playlist, if you want to go back and take a look at that. Um, I'll get you acclimated with the interface here just so that you know how to access the 3D tools. Um, and then we'll jump right into the editing tools specifically. So I'm here uh, right now in AutoCAD. I just reset it to defaults this afternoon um, to show you how I would get to the 3D tools. Um, so I'm going to go down here to my right-hand corner, click on the workspace gear, and I'm going to switch to, now you have the 3D basics workspace, which we've worked in before. I'm actually going to switch to 3D modeling um, to get to that full functionality. This has all of the 3D tools you could ever want. Um, in AutoCAD. So again, that's the workspace gear done on the right-hand corner. If you're following along, click on 3D modeling and it'll bring you into that 3D modeling workspace. And I'm just going to dock my command line so that it's not distracting anybody. Um, up here on the left-hand side on the home ribbon, there's a modeling tab. These are all the features that we've covered in a previous webinar. Um, these are your primitives. So we'll talk a little bit about how to edit primitives. Um, so it quickly lets you create things like boxes, cylinders, cones, etc. Uh, and then some of these functions to create um, 3D objects through, um, if you're starting with 2D geometry, you can extrude a 2D um, closed polyline or um, other uh, shape. And then um, the loft command, the revolve, and, and sweep. We've covered all of these, so some of these were generated um, and using some of those uh, tools. And you might see me use a couple of them in the presentation here. Um, if you want a little bit more info, check out that uh, other recorded webinar on the YouTube playlist. Okay, so today we're going to be focusing on these tools here. The solid editing um, tools can be found on the home ribbon in the solid editing panel. And we have union, subtract, and intersect, which are your Boolean operations. You've got interfere, slice, thicken, and you've got a bunch of these extract, imprint, color edges, copy edges, um, a bunch of options for working with faces, which we'll go through. We've got separate, 
Um, we won't be covering clean or check, but they're just to clean up really complex models. It might have some um, uh, some areas of them that need to be cleaned or uh, repaired. Uh, we will talk about shell because it's it's kind of cool too. Um, and then there are a couple here at the bottom that we'll cover at the end: uh, convert to solid and convert to surface. Uh, so let's jump right down here. Um, well, I'm just going to throw a box in here real quick, and I'll show you. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is bring up the properties palette. And each one of these primitives will have some custom properties that you can change through the properties palette to change the general shape and size. Um, so here you can change the position of it. If I wanted it like 10, you'll watch it jump over here. I'll bring it back to negative 1. It'll jump back on screen here. Uh, you can change the length of it just by, maybe I want a two by two, oh, by two box. And you can quickly change the general shape of that box. Um, delete that. You can do this with um, cylinders will have slightly different properties. It'll have a radius that you can change down here. Uh, so I'll change the radius to two. And you'll see that get wider. You can change the height. I want that to be one and it'll shrink. Um, so aside from editing these uh, primitives in the properties palette, if I close this, if you zoom in, I'm just going to throw another box in here. Um, if you zoom in on these, you can see the little blue arrows uh, that pop up, these grips, and you can modify the, uh, the solid directly by grabbing that grip and you can put in command line entry so or a, a dynamic input here so if I say two it'll raise it by two if I want to change this radius I can modify it this way right so it'll respond uh, that way the same goes for your your box if you want to change it you can just grab the uh, there you go. If you want to move that corner to move it in um, two directions at once, you can manipulate it through the grips. So that's the first basic editing tip um, for manipulating solids in AutoCAD. Uh, the next thing that we'll jump into here are um, these tools that I talked about here. Uh, you can find all of these on the solid editing um, panel. They also have commands that you can just enter into the command line. So if you memorize them, um, depending on how you like to work, if you prefer the command line, go ahead and memorize those commands and type them in. You never have to touch the ribbon. Um, but if you would prefer to find them on the ribbon, that is perfectly fine too. Um, I'm going to I'm going to do a little bit of both here in the presentation today. So um, I'll pan over here and. Uh, come right into this here. I've drawn two boxes, just primitive boxes, and you'll see that they um, they are separate entities. So there's one and there's number two. Um, Union will take those two objects and mold them into a single solid. Um, so I'll uh, I'll enter it at the command line. It's the Union command. And what you do is so just select the objects that you want to union together. And you see the geometry show up right here um, where the two meet. Uh, here's an example on the right of one that hasn't been unioned. And you'll see that where the geometry meets, they do overlap each other, but they're still two separate objects. This one, if I click on it, is one complete object now. And if I move that, you can move it by grabbing the, the grip in here if you want. It's not working for me right now. Oh, no. Where'd we go? That ah, doesn't want to. Um, if I move this, the whole thing moves together. Okay. So the next command here is... Victoria? Yes. Hi, Martin. Uh, before we jump... Hi, sorry. Before we jump to subtract, don't mean to interrupt your flow. Oh, go ahead. I, I have a quick question. Jump right in. What's a up? A lot of our viewers... A lot of our viewers um, mentioned that they are using verticals 
And I know with like Plant 3D, for example, you have to change your workspace, but you do have 3D modeling and 3D basics in Plant 3D. Uh, are you familiar with some of the other verticals like uh, AutoCAD architecture? Do they have that workspace to switch to for just basic 3D modeling? I do can switch, well, okay, so in AutoCAD architecture, there is um, just the architecture workspace that you start with. It's the default. Um, but you can switch to the basic AutoCAD profile. So if you switch over to that profile, all of these workspaces are available. Um, drafting and annotation, 3D basics, and 3D modeling. So you could go in and modify your CUI to pull these into the um, into the architecture profile, the MEP profile, um, in one of those programs, for instance. Um, but typically out of the box, I, I'm most familiar with architecture, so architecture has just that architecture workspace. Um, if you're just trying to use a couple of these commands and you know what the commands are, they will still work. Um, or you could come into the, um, the CUI. Let me open that up real quick. Oh. I posted a video also, uh, Victoria, uh, oh, you did. on the link. Somebody asked that question, so I, uh, but uh, you can show them very quickly, please. Perfect. Okay. Okay. So I, I will. Um, I'll move on so that we stay on topic. I don't want to get too far off, but that that is a good point to bring up. Um, they are all thank those you. commands thank are still available. That video. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Noman. All right. So let's move on to subtract here. Um, subtract will uh, do exactly that. It will subtract one object from another object. So you'll see where these two are overlapping. If I type in subtract, uh, the first thing that I'm prompted for is the region that I want to subtract from. So I want to keep this bottom piece and I want to subtract the top one from it. So I'm going to pick it and click enter. You can select more than one object if you want to subtract something from several objects. Um, I just have the one right now, so uh, then it's going to prompt me for what I want to subtract from it. So I'll click that second one, click enter, and you notice that that piece is now removed from, uh, from this one. So that one's pretty straightforward. Um, let me go back, I'll show one more thing with this. Let's say I have two pieces. If I want to subtract that top piece from both of these bottom pieces, I can select them both and subtract it. And now these both become part of the same piece. And I'll show you a trick a little bit farther down the line for how to separate those. There's actually a separate command if you wanted these to be um, unique. Okay, so on to intersect. Uh, intersect, in a way, is sort of the opposite of subtract. Um, I just want to keep the portion where these two pieces intersect each other. So just the piece right in the middle there. So uh, here I'll switch it up, and I'll use the intersect button up here on the ribbon. And I can just select both of these objects, click Enter, and I'm left with just that piece where the two pieces intersected. So again, that's here, intersect, select your pieces, click enter, and you're just left over with the, uh, or left with the, um, the two pieces that, or sorry, the one piece uh, where the two pieces overlapped. Okay, interfere. Interfere is interesting. It's a, uh, it's more of a checking tool for complex models. I don't know what's going on here. Sorry, got stuck for a second here. Here we go. Okay, so if I select these two pieces with the interfere command, oh, what am I doing here? Sorry, I have to select two selection sets, that's what it is. So you select one of these, click enter, select the second one, and what that's going to do is zoom into the area where the two of them interfere, and then it'll bring up this dialog box um, that helps you manage where uh, those interferences are. This is really useful for very complex 3D models, if you have a lot of things that aren't supposed to be interfering with each other, but you're having trouble telling whether or not they're overlapping by a little bit. 
this can come in really handy. All right, uh, slice. So I will, yeah, I'll leave my, I have my visual style set to hidden, by the way. Um, you can change this to something like conceptual to make it a little easier to see, or um, I prefer hidden for now. Uh, but I might change it for some of the more circular objects so that we can see uh, the nuances there. Uh, so slice uh, lets you do um, exactly that. It lets you slice an object in half or along a particular line. So slice here up on the ribbon or the slice command. Um, what you do is you select the object and then you can define uh, let's say we want to slice along the X, Y axis or the Y, Z axis. You can click on any one of these options down here. Uh, there are a bunch of different ways that you can slice. You can do it by selecting three points on a plane. Um, that is the default option. Um, I find it easier sometimes to um, either draw a surface through here um, or to pick an actual plane. So I'm just going to select that particular plane. I'm going to select the middle because I just want to slice it right down the middle. And after I clicked, I was prompted here to select a point on the side that I want to keep. Or I can choose to keep both sides. So I'll show you once. I'll select something over here. There we go. All right. So it kept the one side. But let's say I didn't want to do that. Maybe I want to keep both pieces but just do something completely different with them. Uh, let's slice it on a different axis this time. I'm just going to say uh, accept the default here to keep both sides. And you'll see that these are now two different objects sliced along that uh, ZY or YZ plane. So if I take one of these, I can move it along here, throw it off to the side, and now you have two completely different objects. Uh, this here, I'm going to use the extrude command uh, to create a surface. And then we'll talk about the thicken command. So I'm just using extrude. I selected my poly, my, um, sorry, my spline that I created here. And now I have, uh, let me show you in the properties palette. Over here in the properties palette, you'll see this is a surface that's been extruded. And let's say that I needed to create a, an object that had a, um, a fluid shape like this, but you want to turn it into a 3D solid so that you can actually work with it um, a little easier than this surface. What you might do is extrude the surface along that line using the 2D geometry, and then you can use the thicken command. So if I select the thicken command, it's then going to ask me, at the command line, uh, specify thickness. So I'll add in, I know I want 0.125 for this. And you'll notice that it thickens this surface. And now when I select it, it's a 3D solid. So that's a quick way to convert surfaces to uh, 3D solids. If um, Sometimes you'll notice with the curved geometry like that, it'll end up with a weird crease. You can always come back, throw that thicken command in there again, and say 0 0.0125 if you want a really thin but still 3D solid object. There we go. So now I'll change the uh, visual style here so you can see exactly what that looks like. And then we can turn it around so you can see exactly we're working with there. We'll zoom in. You can see it has a thickness now. Okay. Uh, well, let's stay in conceptual for right now. Okay, so over here, I've all, oh, no, I didn't thicken this one yet. Um, we'll use the thicken command again here. 0.0125, and now we have a 3D solid out of that and we'll talk about the separate command. So in order to talk about the separate command, I'm first going to use subtract. I'm going to subtract from this and then pick 
the larger object that I've thrown in here and subtract it from these two pieces. Um, and then if I wanted to move these apart, maybe I need them to be a farther distance or I need to take one and move it somewhere else in the model. Uh, you'll notice that they, they're tied together right now. So if I try to move them, they're going to move as one piece. Uh, the separate command allows you to easily separate items that might be grouped together because you use the subtract command and they accidentally got tied together or maybe they were one um, the entire time but now you need to separate them. So up here in the third button down, there's a separate uh, option. And we click this. And that's it. Now it's two different objects. I can move this. So again, I'll undo that. So that went really fast. Um, most of these commands, as a side note, are um, also part of the solid edit command. So if you're looking for a tool and you're not sure where to find it, the solid edit command is a really good place to start. So type in solid edit and you get a bunch of options for face. So you can extrude faces, move them, all this. We'll go through this in a minute. Um, if I re-enter, oh, sorry. If I re-enter that solid edit command, you can get to your edge options. You can copy or color them. And if I enter it one more time, you get a bunch of options for body. This is imprint, separate solids, which is what we just used. Uh, shell, clean, check, undo is always there for you, or exit the command. So just a quick trip, uh, a quick trick. Um, if you're looking for something and can't find it, use that solid edit command. So here we'll go through and do solid edit, and then body, and separate solids. Pick the solid and, oh, sorry, accept the defaults. And now they're two different objects. Okay, on to shell. Uh, shell here, um, well, what I've drawn so far is a, um, this is a torus. So I'm going to copy the torus over here to um, show you, to demonstrate something at the end, and you'll see see what I mean in a moment. Um, so the torus here, it's just a standard torus that I grabbed out of the, uh, the solid modeling toolbar, or um, ribbon here. And it is solid all the way through. Uh, shell, what shell does is it hollows out a 3D solid. Um, it is recommended that you keep a copy of your original model um, just in case you, you know, the shell doesn't go the way you want it, or you might need to fill it in later, uh, that can be a little more complicated. So keep a, a backup copy of your model if you're going to use this command. Um, so we'll use shell, click on it here, and then identify a thickness. So this is sort of like thicken, except in the opposite direction, kind of. It's uh, what you want to be left of the uh, the outer shell of this torus. So I'm going to do the same thing and say, 0.0125, and then I'm going to have a very thin shell left of this torus. And I'll demonstrate this now by using the section plane command, which we talked about a couple weeks ago. This comes in really handy if you want to check really quickly. There we go. Let's draw it right across there. Okay. So this might be a little hard to see. Ah, there we go. That demonstrates it. So this is a solid on the right-hand side, and then this is the one that I modified. Um, this right here, it, it's hollow. It might be easier to see in a different visual style. There we go. Okay, so you can see that thickness there on the edge. Um, that is what's left of the solid. The entire inside of that torus is hollow. So you could walk through it theoretically if um, if this were a building. Um, this one is still solid. Okay. Uh, you know what? I'll, I'll leave the section plane in there. Oh, it's done some weird things to my other solids. I will not leave it in. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so let's go over to um, the next row here. This whole row is going to talk about faces. 
and how to modify uh, 3D faces on or faces of 3D solids in AutoCAD. So I've started here um, with just a regular box. And the first tool that you can use, um, again, it's in the solid edit command in that submenu, or you can find all of these things right up here in this uh, faces list. So the first one here is extrude faces. And once you get into the command, it's going to prompt you to pick a face. Now, if you notice, as I mouse over this, the whole thing lights up. If I click on this, though, it's just going to pick one face. But if you're not sure what you're picking, what you can do is hold down the control key on your keyboard, and it will give you sub-object. It's called sub-object selection, uh, and let you pick particular faces, and only those faces will light up as you move over them. So that's a handy little trick there. Hold down control if you're trying to see exactly what you're picking on. Okay, so I've picked this face and say enter. And here it's asking me either for a height or to select a path. And the first thing I'm going to show you is just the height. Uh, let's say we want to add two units to this. I'll say enter. Uh, and then it's going to prompt me for the angle of the taper. So I'll show you what zero looks like. So this is zero. So that's two units this way with a zero degree taper. Let's go back and I'll grab the extrude again. Use my sub object selection. Pick that. And I'll say two. And two this time. But this time I'm going to say maybe I want a 15% taper. And it tapers that at 15 degrees from the surface for two units. Uh, this might have ended a little shy of that, I don't know. Um, but if you're looking to get an angle on something, uh, that's a pretty good way to do it. Uh, the other option here is to extrude along a path. So I'm going to use my sub-object selection in the... Uh, in the menu there, there we go. I pick this face again, uh, accept that as the default, and then it's asking me if I want to enter a height, but this time I actually want to go along a path. So I pick path, or enter P for path, and then it's going to ask me to select the path of extrusion, and I want to use this line right here. And you'll notice it's gone and extruded that face along that particular path. So maybe I got that 15 degree angle there um, without having to get a, a weird um, pyramid shape on the end of my, my box, whatever you're, uh, you're trying to do. All right, um, so on to the next one, uh, taper face. So here again, I'll pick a, I'll pick a particular face and uh, once I get into the command here, it's asking me if I want to, um, it's asking me to specify a base point. So I'm going to pick um, the bottom here. Uh, actually, this is a good opportunity to show you. Um, over here on the right hand side, you can click on this flyout menu to add 3D object snap to your status bar. And I'm going to turn on my 3D object snaps, which are here or you can use F4 or the 3D, 3D O snap command. And then I'm just gonna turn on, okay, so it's got vertexes and centers of faces, um, but I want a midpoint edge as well. So here I'm going to pick this midpoint edge to taper. And then it's asking me to pick another axis or another point along the axis that I wanna taper. So I'm gonna pick that other midpoint here and then I'm going to specify an angle, let's say 15 degrees. And now it has tapered this face 15 degrees from the axis that we defined on the face. So let's say uh, we have an object, we've modified this box to, um, I've just extruded a small hole through it. So here you can actually see right through there um, let me get back to my angle there. There we go. Okay. 
so maybe I want to move one of these faces uh, one way or the other. Um, what I can do is use move face and use my sub-object object selection, pick that face, click enter, and then it's asking me for a base point. I'll pick that midpoint again. And then how far do I want to move this face? Let's say one unit along that line. And that's a pretty easy way to uh, quickly modify um, one of these primitive objects. So you can start with a box and very quickly uh, morph it into something that looks more like whatever you're trying to design. Okay. So here, um, let's say I get this little model from somebody else and I want to copy just, just a couple of the faces. Maybe I want to start with them and then extrude them or uh, manipulate them, but I don't need the rest of the model. I just need a couple of these faces. Uh, there's a command for this, copy faces. And uh, let's say I need just this face and the cone, in, or not the cone, the, the cylinder inside of it, the borehole. I selected those, and then I can just pick my base point, and slide this out this way, and now I've copied these faces out. So now I can grab these, and they're, they're two faces, and they're just, they're movable. You can do whatever you want with them now. You can modify them, or uh, extrude them, or whatever you'd like to do. Oh, sorry about that. Um, okay, offset faces. So offset faces will let you do, um, it's similar to copy face, but uh, works, um, works more like the offset command than copy. So again, I'll, I'll grab this one and this one. And then I enter an offset distance. So let's say one. Now this actually modifies my model. Um, so this change this by offsetting these two faces, one unit in each of these directions. And you can see I, I very quickly have a different model that I'm working with. Uh, the same works here for um, deleting faces. If I wanted to get rid of that um, borehole really quickly, what I could do is use delete faces, use my sub-object selection, pick, of course it picked the wrong one, awkward moment, Volker would be proud. All right, there we go. And I'm just going to accept that. And it deleted that hole, and now I've, um, I've healed this object so that there's no hole in it anymore. And the next one down here, uh, rotate face. This one's interesting. Um, let's take, there we go, rotate faces. Um, let's take this one down here. We'll take this. And it's going to ask for an axis the same way that um, taper faces asked you for an axis. So I'm going to pick the same one here. There we go. Except now it's asking me for a rotation angle. Um, so I'm going to enter 15 degrees for an angle. And this is another way to get an angle on your model um, very quickly by defining an axis and then entering a particular angle. So if you have a complex model and uh, so let's say that there are areas that you want somebody else to look at and you want to highlight them really quickly, uh, color face is one way to, to handle that. Um, right here, color faces, what you do is select those. Let's say I want somebody to look at this and the, uh, the borehole there and click on them. Hit enter and it pops up your color selector. And so let's say we're just going to turn this red and say OK, and it quickly highlights that. And uh, let me show you a different visual style where it's a little bit more obvious. Uh, let's look at shaded. So now you can really quickly tell anything that's gray is um, you know, uh, just part of the regular model, and then we, we really want to focus on this area here that we've lit up red. 
So that's color faces. Uh, that, those are all the commands for modifying faces through the solid edit command. All right. So let's move up one row. Uh, here's our, oh, I'm just going to change this back to hidden. Okay. Press pull is really cool. I love the press pull command. It's one of my favorites. Uh, press pull right up here. Um, or you can type in press pull at the command line. And what I can do, it, it will detect those different surfaces or faces on your model. So I can very quickly just say, you know, I want this to be one unit out. Grab this one. I want this to be one or maybe, you know, 0.75 and then 0.5. You know, and I, I quickly have that stepped look to my model. Now, if I need this to be longer, I can just grab this one and pull it. If I need this to be, um, maybe this one needs to be shorter. I can move this down if I know exactly what that distance is. I could actually press it down uh, a particular distance. Um, if I want to move this one out, I can just grab this. It brings that borehole with me um, all the way out to here, and you'll see that it heals those uh, intersections there as it goes. Uh, so I very quickly have a much different looking model. Um, and again, this all started from a, a simple primitive up here. Um, so very, very quick to modify your, your uh, solids that way. Okay, so from here, um, this is actually relevant to LT customers. Um, you could ask that somebody do this for you in full AutoCAD if you have a client that's sending you 3D models and maybe you just need a wireframe of it so that you can uh, play around with it. Uh, this is just one good use of um, extract edges. So the command is X edges. Um, you just click the object, hit enter, and then uh, if I move the model out of the way, I'll show you exactly what I'm left with. These are all uh, these there lines and lines and circles based on. Um, based on the geometry that you uh, that you started with here. So it's just a quick wireframe with regular objects that you can modify in AutoCAD LT as well as AutoCAD. So that's really handy. Uh, extract edges. <laughs> uh, imprint, I don't know if you noticed, but over here I, I had added a couple of uh, lines here to make this easier to, to modify, to get those steps into my model. Um, I did that using the imprint command um, so I had this geometry. I knew that I wanted to divide this into quarters along that side. And um, right now, if I, oh, if I go like this, you'll see they're just 3D polylines uh, that I created. If I use the imprint command, it will um, ascribe those to the surface and divide the surface into several subsurfaces. So I click this 3D solid. Oh, sorry, um, got a little ahead of myself. Click the 3D solid, and then if you look down at the command line, it says select an object to imprint. Um, so I'll select the first one. Um, unfortunately, I haven't found a way to do this with more objects all at once. Um, so delete the source object. I'll say yes. Oh no, I'm sorry. This can be done. Um, it's one object at a time, though. Uh, you can still stay in the command, but all right, there we go. So now I have this um, here. I'll, I'll use press pull again on this, and you'll see that these are now different uh, divisions in that what uh, in what used to be a singular surface. So you can quickly modify them that way. So if you have geometry to be added to the side of a surface because you know that you want to divide it up a particular way, that's a really easy way to do it to use imprint. All right, two more here. Uh, color edges. Oh, wrong one. Here we go. Color edges. Let's do exactly that. Um, so you can select the select the edges. 
Here we go. Maybe we just want a couple of them here. There we go. All right, click enter and it brings up your color picker again and maybe we want them to be, I don't know, cyan. We'll say okay. Sometimes it's a little hard to see, uh, but now those edges are cyan. Do it again and make them red to make it a little easier to see. Oh. So just grab like, grab that circle there. And we'll make them red, and hopefully everybody can see that. So you can change the color of the edges of your model if you want to do that. Uh, the other thing that you can do is copy the edges. So I'll use my sub object selection. Again, hold down that control key, and grab those edges. Maybe I just want to grab the outline of this. Here we go. Okay, so now I've just got the outline of this isometric piece. And, uh, oh, and I'm just going to specify my displacement, and it's going to put it over here off to the side. And now I have that outline. So if I needed that shape for some reason, or, you know, maybe you have a, a plan view of your model and you want to grab the edges from that, um, this is a really quick way to do that. Okay, so two more here. Um, convert to solid and convert to surface. Uh, these are really helpful for working with different types of 3D objects in AutoCAD. So what I've drawn here, uh, and if you look in the properties palette, you can see it's a mesh box. And I did that from the mesh uh, ribbon tab up here. And then the, uh, there are mesh primitives as well. So you might encounter these. Um, in your day-to-day -day work, if you work with 3D stuff, you may find that you want solids, but somebody else has sent you a mesh. Uh, there are quick ways to convert these. Um, one of the things that you might want to do is start with a mesh box, and maybe um, you want rounded corners on it. So one of the most popular things to do here is to smooth them. So I'll use this Smooth Object button, and you'll get this prompt saying that uh, the mesh cannot be created for um, for this because it's not a 3D solid. It's already a mesh, so what it's going to do... Oh, no, I used the wrong button. I'm sorry, that's another awkward moment. Uh, I meant to use this uh, mesh smooth more, so this has already been smoothed. I'll start with a regular box. I can then use mesh smooth to convert that solid into a mesh. Um, so Mesh Smooth More will curve those edges for me. You can do it up to two times, I think, three, four. Um, so it smooths out the edges of a model. So maybe we needed this smooth curve uh, to, our, to our object. Uh, let me pop it into Conceptual here so you can see it. And then from here, what you can do is use convert to solid, which you can find up here on the ribbon, um, to make this a solid object again. So now it's back to a 3D solid. It doesn't have that um, fluid, um, it can't be manipulated as fluidly as a mesh, but if you're working with a mesh and then you need to convert it back to a 3D solid once you're done making that more um, curved looking object, uh, convert to solid is the uh, command that you'll want to use for that. So the other thing here is um, maybe I have a 3D solid and I want to convert it to a surface. Um, instead of having that hollow, hollowed out, or sorry, instead of having that, um, that solid all the way through object, you might want, um, you might want a hollow object for some reason. Um, convert to surface can do that for you. And you'll notice now you get that ruled surface. And this is another good opportunity for our section plane. Let's cut that through. Oh, if I pick the right spot, that would be good. Let me get that section plane right through here. There we go. You'll notice now that that's a, a hollowed out box. And those are all uh, a continuous surface for that object. 
All right. Oh. There we go. All right. Um, so that pretty much concludes my uh, my demonstration portion here. Uh, Martin, do you want to finish up the um, the housekeeping items at the end and run a run the quick poll, and then we can take some questions and answers. Sounds good. Thanks, Victoria. That was a very clear presentation. We appreciate it. And we will have a few questions probably when we get to Q&A, but just real quickly, I'll get through these slides. I want to point out these additional topic resources. These are um, links that you can get to from the slide deck, which you can download from the box link. So if you want to take a deeper dive there, and then also, of course, lots of downloads and articles that pertain to AutoCAD and AutoCAD LT 2016 and soon 2017. And we do want to remind you that you can sign up others and more in your office can join our webinars and contact us at these uh, links as well. So before we jump into our Q&A, as Victoria mentioned, we'll want to run uh, one more quick poll. And let me get that started here. Simply, did you learn something new in today's session? Go ahead and let that run. Looks like we got pretty good uh, results here. I'm going to close and share that. Uh, we had 99% Victoria learned something new, and then 1% uh, out there knew everything that you demonstrated. But the 99% all new stuff. Good, uh, good uh, learning here. I'm really so excited to hear that. So with that, awesome. So with that, we do have a few um, perhaps unanswered questions in the chat window. Uh, Norman, did you have a few that you wanted to present to Victoria? Yes, I do. Um, there are a few questions. Uh, what's the difference between a 3D face and a mesh? That's the first question. Okay, difference between a 3D face and a mesh. Um, so a 3D face is, actually, let me, I should probably share my screen again. Uh, it'll be easier to, to show. Uh, so a 3D face is um, it's a component that makes up a 3D solid. So, uh, for instance, this one right here uh, is made up of several faces. Let me, let me just get a box out here to make this really simple. So this right here is... Um, it's a 3D solid. It's comprised of six... I'm not sure we're seeing your screen. Oh, sorry. Oh. All right. There we go. Sorry about that. Got it. That was a little awkward. Um, okay. So here we go. Um, this right here, I drew just one of the 3D primitive boxes. Um, this box is a 3D solid. The 3D solid is made up of six different faces. So the faces are um, sub-objects of that 3D solid. A mesh is a different kind. Of, so you have 3D solids, then you have meshes, and you have surfaces. And meshes, let me go over here and just show you really quickly. If I draw a, 3D, um, a 3D mesh box, uh, you can get a much more fluid form out of it. Uh, 3D solids tend to be very rigid, very... Um, they're good for mechanical engineering and very precise um, work. But if you're looking for something like, like industrial design, right, you, you get um, you get more, you're worried about having nice curves or uh, those rounded edges. This is a really quick way to get that, right? I can get a finer mesh. Ah, that's as far as I could go. It's like five or six levels of mesh. And if you look, let's see if I can get in. Um, they're easier to manipulate in a uh, in a fluid fashion than 3D solids are. So I hope that kind of answers the question. Uh, they're they're used for two completely different styles of design. 
Did that help, Nomad? I think so. Do you have any, Thank you. Have anybody I have another question. If it, sure, sure. Oh, no. Um, the other question was, why do solid objects lost their grip when you union it with another bond? So they become one object and you lose the push pulls on it? Oh, um, so here, I'm assuming that they're talking about these uh, these grips that you get with the primitives. So each primitive will yeah. have grips on it. Um, but as soon as it's not a primitive anymore, so like, these ones over here we subtracted. Uh, they lose their grips yeah. because they're not primitive objects. Um, the primitive objects will have, um, so every box will have six surfaces, or sorry, six faces that make it up, and um, they all have those properties in common, so you can change the height of that, you can change the width, um, and AutoCAD knows exactly what to do with that. Once you start changing it into a unique shape, you lose the, the ability to use those grips because um, it's unique and it doesn't share properties with every other box or every other sphere. Do you guys have anything to add to that? Very good. Okay. No, man, an, actually, I another do. question? Uh, okay. Actually, I do. So um, if you want to manipulate the faces separately, uh, you can uh, look at the, under the solid, there's this sub-object filter. It says no filter right now for you, Victoria. Oh, yes. Under selection. Yep. Yeah, so you can select faces and then select a face and then push and pull that up. Yes, that's true. Ah, uh, there we go. That's a good example. So so what Nomad's talking about here is this sub-object um, filtering. So you can set it to vertexes, edges, faces, uh, solid history. Um, these these three are probably going to be your most useful, vertexes, edges, and faces. So I've selected faces here. Now I don't have to press down control in order just to select that face. And you can grab the um, grab that center point of the, uh, the UCS that's on there and just push and pull it. Um, the same thing with one like this. Okay. Uh, do we have another question? We've got about three minutes left. Hello. Um, do, <laughs> yeah, I'm do you want to you wanna, you wanna talk about solid history just a little bit, or would that be a topic for another session? Because solid history is uh, off by default, I believe, and you have to actually intentionally turn it on. Um, do you, Do you have anything to add about it? Because I I'm not prepared to to speak about it today. Um, yeah, I, I, maybe that's a topic for for another 3D. But go ahead, Noma. No, I don't. I mean, um, basically, I can't uh, as well. Um, Yeah, it seems like a topic all um, to all of its own. I don't know if we could dedicate a whole webinar to it, but it's um, I think it's a little too complicated maybe to to address here. I, I definitely I think wasn't prepared. We, we, have, hmm? we did get a lot of questions about, so your demonstration was a, a lot of a very clear um, methods of how each tool uses is used. Uh, but we got a lot of questions of why would you do that or why would you do this over that and and I think it's just good to point out that when you get into complex modeling you're going to discover applications of how to use this or how to use some of these tools in combination or how to use some of these tools in ways that you might not um, think about initially for example if, if push pull doesn't work in one particular application maybe a, a union would or other combinations you're going to discover as you're just actually implementing these tools in a more complex model. That's very true. It um it is hard to try to cater this to every industry, so I that's why I had a very generic basic uh, data set here. I didn't want to exclude anybody, uh, but it, it is hard to um, figure out exactly how this would apply to each specific instance that a customer might run into. Mm -hmm. 
Right. Do we, and then in some cases, when you were like setting or, or typing in degrees or distances or, or an angle for a taper, there there might be alternative ways to get that with snap points or references as well. So there's usually oh. multiple ways of implementing each of these commands. Absolutely. As well. I, I really I would encourage everybody to download the data set, and um, I'll provide I'll actually save a copy of this with the finished model here, and you'll be able to compare the two if you want to download the um, the data set and play around with it yourself. All right, I think we're at the top of the hour here. Um, for any questions that we didn't get to, uh, feel free to email us autodesk.help.webinars at autodesk.com and put build your AutoCAD IQ in the subject line and we'll be happy to answer your questions that didn't get answered here today. Okay? And thank you so Thanks much for everyone. joining us. All right, see you Thanks. next week. Thank you. Bye. Bye.